Hey guys, y'all should be pretty much used to this black screen by now because that means a story's coming up. Okay, in the previous updates, whenever I did an update, I can't remember, um, I had mentioned about me rewriting the stories. Two of them to be exact, Old Friends and New Love, which I have completely rewritten, and same with Her Knife and His Heart. Completely redone, completely rewritten, and today I'm going to show you the five, well probably more than five, but first five chapters of the new revised Her Knife and His Heart. I might delete the other ones, I might not, I really don't know. But this is going to be Her Knife and His Heart Revisited. I guess, something. Okay, chapter one, The Same Dream. As I walk down my dark, winding driveway, it is 2.24, and, and darkness surrounds the quiet and moving soul. The soul, trapped within structures and structures of the human body, creating an unmoving meat bag. He, he who is unknown watches the soul trying to claim it. He whispers, fall, sell your soul to me, do it. But this does not work, for my mind, soul, and spirit are no longer here. Instead, they are lost within the dark recesses of my own fear and hatred. My thoughts are clouded and unknown. The presence of death appearing before me, showing me the downfall of everyone I've ever loved. I hate you! I screamed, waking up again. Then I hear someone bang on the door telling me to shut up. Growing silent, I claw up my restraints. I hate being in an insane asylum, trapped with no ounce of freedom. They... My so-called loving mother and father always claimed that this was a place for special people. A place to get the help someone needs. Supposedly, it was a comforting place. Full of love and people willing to help you. But as they always did, they lied. They tricked me into thinking it was something good when in reality, all this place is is, an, is a lonely cell filled with stressed and scared doctors and caretakers. Medicine's that will so-called help you get better. They're just a false sense of hope, thinking maybe one day we'll be normal. But they don't actually help you. You're stuck here until the day you die, or bust out, which is damn near impossible. Well, except for on one special day every month. <laughs> I will have my revenge on my accursed parents, who left me here to rot and die. One day I'll whisper with maniacal laughter. Chapter 2. New Kid Morning is finally here. The man came to my room. As the usual routine, time to get up, Miss Unspoken. <laughs> Miss Unspoken, I hated that damn nickname. They gave it to me ever since... I came here because I wouldn't tell them my name or anything else about me. I got up, my arms still held tight in the restraints, and walked out the door down the hall into the group area. The others stared at me like they're like normal. I walked to my usual dark corner, only to notice a figure follow me. His arms were strained to his sides. Hey, a rough voice says. I just stare, his black hair and white hoodie standing in front of me. Unable to see his face, I try to use my hands to move his hair away. But he moves away before I can, and instead sits beside me saying nothing. I look at him only to notice his blood red eyes staring back at me from behind his hair. I hear a growl escape his lips. Don't start with me, new boy, I say in a whisper. Well, that got you to talk. <laughs> I'm Skylar, he told me with a laugh. I didn't respond, only stared at him. The, then I hear the name and snap my head in the direction it came from. That man called me over there and said, it's time to go back to your room now and you're getting your restraints off in a few days. You better behave this time. He growled the last part. I just rolled my eyes and walked in my room. 
Sitting on the bed, I lean back against the wall, slightly hitting my head against it. What are you doing? I hear that same familiar voice call out. I stop until I hear the steps go away from my still asylum door. No, not again, I whisper. I can't let him get closer, he'll be killed. My thoughts become clouded until I jump at the clink and clang of keys in the lock. Get up, girl. It's time for lunch, an unknown, unknown voice said. I walked to the door, no, only to see that no one was there and the door was unlocked. Weird, I say in a whisper, but walk out to the lunch area. I get my tray and sit down at the table near the back of the lunch area, poking at whatever was on my plate. I got up to throw it away. Wasting food, I see. I hear from behind me, I just shrug and walk back to my room, throwing away the food in the process. I want my knives, I say, moving my hand and wrist as if throwing one at the wall. You're not the only one. A voice said, startling me. I look at the opening where my door is to see the new kid, his red eyes staring at me once again. I move slightly, as if saying he could sit down. He sat, asking me quick, asking me questions, but he got no answer. I just stared at him, my thoughts consumed in trying to figure out why he looked so familiar. He wore a ring on a chain around his neck. I my head to the side and reached for it. He jumped back, saying, Quit! This is a very special ring. I heard, a, I heard someone yell down the hall. No one is supposed to be in their rooms. Then, a, then the quick run of footsteps came following after. Quick! Hide! I whispered to him as I led him to a hidden room near the door. Footsteps walked into my room and then back out and back down the hall. I slowly opened the door and walked back to and walked to sit on sit back on the bed. Weird. No security guard has ever stepped foot in my room. They know better. I told him. That Skylar kid just stared at me with a hint of anger. He noticed what was in my hand. I held the ring from the chain around his neck. I had seen this once before. I was forced to leave. Tears flooded my eyes as I held out the ring for him to put back on the chain. Please leave, I whimpered. I heard footsteps walk down the hall, walk out and back down the hall. One of the doctors looked in. Miss Killer, where are you? He asked. This doctor was the only one who knew what I went by and how I responded. He heard three knocks against the wall near the far corner. Would you please come here? He motioned over towards the bed. He heard me knock once again against the wall. <sighs> he went to the corner and picked me up only to notice I had been crying. He took me out of the room, down the hall, past the countless steel doors, and into another room. I've noticed an improvement. Even though the others believe that I'm crazy, but I'm going to remove your restraints once again. The doctor told me. I heard the clink as he turned the key for each restraint and then a bang as each one hit the floor. He turned around and I was gone. I had ran back to my room, slamming the steel door behind me. I sat in my corner, on my knees close to my chest and cried, remembering my past. None of the doctors or security guards could find me. The night ter terrors came back, and my anger and eagerness for revenge grew. No questions were asked except from Skylar. Although my doctor wrote down everything for me, I wouldn't answer many of the questions that were asked. Chapter 3 The Flashback It was eight years ago when I was the age of 15. I was sitting on my bed, tears pouring down my face as my mother threw my clothes into the trash bags. After your treatment, we'll come and get you. We promise. You'll only be there a few months, if that. You'll be home soon enough, I heard her say. 
I was leaving then. No contact with anyone from there on. I couldn't even tell him one last I love you. My father told me that there was no time, but I had to get ready for my bus, my new bus to pick me up. And I would be heading to Sutton's Mental Recovery Institute that night. No questions asked and none were answered. An evil giggle escaped my lips as I remembered what had happened so many years ago. Yeah, a few months, they said. I've been in this hellhole for eight damn years. Not once did they even come and visit me, let alone try to take me home. I screamed, banging my fist against the wall. I had forgotten about Skylar, but I was pretty sure he had moved on after not getting any calls or after the months and years when I had never come home. When I had left, the night terrors began. The replay of what they had done did to me haunted my dreams each night for two years straight. I was too terrified to sleep, not just from the night terrors, but also the fear of being killed. Chapter 4 A New Start The doctor came into my room. Do you think he'll go out there? He asked. Dunno. I responded quickly, not even looking at him. I'll keep the door unlocked then, he said, walking out. I stared at the wall, contemplating on what, what I was going to do. Getting up, I walked out of the room, down the hall. I went to the group area and looked in, see, to see if I could find Skylar. Only the others were there. So I went farther down the hall and turned down to another, unsure of where to go. A blood-curdling scream startled me as I looked behind to see one of the nurses I tried to kill the last time I got my restraints off. A passing doctor heard her, took one glance, and ran in the opposite direction. The nurse took off after him a second later. <laughs> oh, how I enjoy the fear I leave in people. I said giddy as I walked back down the hall, only to run into my doctor. Ah, Miss Killer. Call me Alan. I interrupted. Mm, okay. Miss Allen, why aren't you in the lunch area? He asked. I was just looking around and exploring, but I'll go there now. I told him, walking down the hall and into the lunch area. I got my lunch and sat down at the normal table, but... He he was still nowhere to be seen. Screw it. Guess it's time to start my little games again then. I whispered as a small, evil smile crept across my face before I walked out of the lunch area, down the hall, and back into my room. The doctor came a few minutes later, asking, would you like anything to keep yourself busy? I responded, just some paper and a pencil. A second later, I heard the door close, only to hear it reopen about ten minutes later. There you go, he responded, placing the paper and pencil on my desk. When he left, I got up and sat at my desk, just drawing. I drew my normal, disturbing images. <laughs> so evil, so deadly, as I awaited nightfall. Chapter 5, Mind Games of Horror it was a nightfall and all doors were locked, along with the usual sounds of security guards, footsteps occasionally walking up and down the door, up and down the hall. Damn it. There was silence down the hall, meaning he had gone down another hallway. I held a map that could lead me to the head doctor's office. Slowly opening the door, I peered down the hall and quietly made my way in the opposite direction, following the map and passing through meaningless corridors until I reached the, a door labeled Dr. Sutton's office. I slowly opened and crept through the door of the ignorant man's study. He lay there, passed out in a chair with a whiskey bottle on the table next to him. Worthless man, I whispered, my voice filled with disgust. 
I quietly wandered past getting to the records room, my fingers scrolling over labeled folders. I found and pulled out the one with his name on it. Opening it, I found his doctor's name and where his room was. But before I left, I grabbed Skylar's restraint key and a knife from the doctor's area and escaped back to my room unnoticed. I lay on my somewhat comfy bed with a smile on my face and was taken into my revenge filled dreamland. The next morning I awoke by my doctor asking if I was going to the group chat today. I shook my head no and laid back down. I waited to get up once I heard the footsteps disappear down the hallway. I got up, hid my knife in my new hidden drawer beneath my desk. I walked down the hallway, but stopped as I heard voices of doctors coming right for me. I hid in a darkened corridor as they passed by. Yeah, did you hear that one of the knives from the kitchen has gone missing? said one of the doctors as he passed by. They probably lost the damn thing. Hell, Dr. Sutton would lose his own damn head if it wasn't attached and if he didn't have his whiskey. The other doctor responded. I wouldn't doubt that. That was the last thing I heard as I made my way behind them and back on my original route. Turning down meaningless corridors, I finally got to the room labeled 309. This is it. His room. I was hesitant to open the door, but I grew up enough courage to do so when I heard voices coming up from behind me. I entered the room only to find it was empty. Of all fucking things, it was empty. I risked everything, and that damn boy was not even in here. Aggravated, I didn't realize a figure had walked into the room behind me. Why are you in here? You're not Mr. Allen. The voice of the doctor called out. <laughs> An evil giggle escaped my lips. You're acting like you don't remember me, Dr. Funderburk. Do you remember a girl who wouldn't, who would not talk, but only stare at you with careless, glazed of her eyes? I asked. <laughs> y yes, I do. Why do you ask? He stuttered, trying not to let his voice crack. I glared over at him. Remember me? A frightened gasp escaped the poor man's lips. I ran towards him and let my hand lay around his throat. You have one chance to tell me the truth. Where is the boy named Skylar Allen? He stared at me with fearful eyes. I don't know, Miss Kiss. Don't call. Don't you dare call me by my real name. I interrupted him. I, I don't know. He sh he should be back when it's time for bed, he whispered and threw me the key he held in his hand. Thanks, I hissed. I walked past him, not caring who sees, as I walked out of the room and back down the hall. I mean, hell, not like any of the other doctors would believe him anyways. He's just one step away from being fired because of his fear of the patients. Let's just go with, I put him through a lot of hell when I was his patient. <laughs> I giggled at the memory of it. Stop, I was stopped by a guard, but I walked by him not listening to any of the warning or dumbass reprimands he could give me. You better stop, the guard said as I kept walking, leaving his voice as a distant echo. There you go guys, that was pretty much the first five chapters of it revisited, or revised, or whatever, I don't know. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I will keep uploading when I can. Bye guys!